Welcome to Connecting with Nature. I'm your host Bob Bowles and today we're going to talk about a very special habitat called an alvar. What is an alvar? Well, an alvar is a very thin layer of soil over a limestone bedrock. And here just uh, east of Aurelia, just right beside uh, Lake Kukusing, we're standing on the alvar. So if you look down here, there's a limestone bedrock here that I'm standing on, and there's cracks where frost and water has got in and caused these breaks. So we call this a clint, and we call the uh, fissures breaks. So an alvar is uh, limestone bedrock made up of a flat surface of a clint and cracks in it called a greg. On these alvars you get things like ferns um, and you get things like moss. This is um, delicate fern moss and there's a little plant here that's just ready to bloom now in mid-June. It's called a uh, mossy stone crop, for sedum acre. This will all be yellow in another week. We are going to see several other plants on alvars today. An alvar is covered with snow in March. By April, the rains come, the snow starts to melt, and the whole area floods. So it will be flooded with almost half a meter of water because the rock doesn't allow the the water to get away so it, it it floods and that flood starts to recede in early May and we get the first plants. We get things like early saxifrags, a white flower and early buttercup. You're going to see a lot of yellows and whites on alvars. Now in mid-June, we have no evidence of the early saxifrage that covered these rocks and the early buttercup as well. Then after they go, we get a uh, species like um, painted cup, Indian paintbrush, balsam ragwort, longleaf bluets, and the flagship of the alvar out here the three flowered avens or prairie smoke. An interesting flower that we'll talk more about. They're practically to the end of the bloom now and we're getting some other species coming in. Um, and as we go out more on the elvar, we'll see some other species. So why is the elvar here in this particular area? Well, it all goes back to the last ice age. The earth has gone through five or six ice ages, the most le recent being the Wisconsin Glacier or the St. Lawrence uh, ice age. And it covered this whole area with a thick layer of ice, 1.6 kilometers thick, almost a mile thick. And then 20,000 years ago, that ice started to melt. And as it melted, it moved around and the water was flowing, it, that's what can, created the Great Lakes Basin, and the water was flowing south to the Chicago outlet, and up the St. Lawrence to the ocean. But as the ice melted more and more, the earth started to rebound, it cut the Chicago outlet off in early Lake Algonquin. About 12,600 years ago, it found another exit to the St. Lawrence right across by through Aurelia, through Kirkfield. That was called the, the Kirkfield outlet. And it scoured the land here, moved all the soil, and um, that's why we have the bedrock, the, the bottom of the lake. Again, it changed to the Foss Mill outlet about 12,000 years ago, north of here, north of the Algonquin Highlands, and then finally went back to the Chicago outlet where it is today. And the waters have dropped greatly. 
exposing all these limestone plains uh, in this area. Nothing can grow here like crops. It's hard to farm. Some people put cattle on them, ranchers. They, they call it cattle ranching. And uh, there's enough hay to some, uh, that the cattle can somewhat survive for the summer, but it's not great grazing. In this particular area, we have a lot of trees, but you usually don't see trees. We're going to a new alvar that I found a year ago, which I call the bull's alvar, that doesn't have trees at all. But here we look, we can see a few trees, like this white ash growing right through up in a grike in the alvar. There are also some larger trees, like the one behind us over here, the um, bur oak. So we have a couple of large bur oaks here growing again in cracks in the elver. But usually you don't get trees on an elver. You just get shrubs and these very hardy plants. So we're going to go now out into the part of the Alvar area and look at some of the vegetation. Just a note of interest here is we're standing under this tree, which is a butternut tree, which is endangered in Ontario. And you can see this butternut has grown up through the, the break and right between the clint here on the Alvar. Very unusual to get a butternut tree. They're endangered now. The butternut canker has um, killed most of the butternut trees. So have, to have one on the Alvar is of note, and we just thought we'd add that to it. You don't usually get trees on Alvars. to the east and we're on a new Alvar area. Now this isn't the Cardin Alvar. I discovered Cardin Alvar personally myself 35 years ago. I was driving through an area and it came on this very interesting looking area that had loggerhead strikes, brown thrashers, had plants I never saw before and I found out that that uh, about 10 years later, we started to study Alvars, and we use the word Alvar, it's a Swedish name to describe a habitat like this. So the Cardin Alvar, we've been studying for a long time. I produced this little biodiversity booklet about three years ago, and you can see I've marked on here all the Alvar areas. This is Kirkfield here, you can see there's extents of Elvars. We are down in this area and no recording of an Elvar. But last year I stumbled on this and I found 400 acres to the south where I called uh, Bull's Elvar South. And then this spring I've come up north here. I've heard whippoorwills calling here and when I was doing whippoorwill surveys. And now we're just on the southern edge of Bulls Alvar North. It's another 200 acres. So it's here, 400 down here and 200 in that area. I've made a map that better shows the Alvar area here. So you can see it's very extensive. It starts in the south here and then the whippoorwills were in this area. We're up here and we're going to go up into this prime Alvar area right to the north. That's uh, 600 acres, which we call Bulls Alvar. You're going to see a lot of plants 
you're going to see plants like this grass here. This grass is the predominant grass. It's called uh, Discamsia cespitosa tufted hair grass. That's the predominant grass of the Elvar. We're going to see plants. Now, unfortunately, this is balsam ragwort. Uh, three weeks ago, that was in prime condition. It's starting to fade now, as is the painted cup, uh, the longleaf bluets, and um, several other early plants. When they came out three weeks ago, at the beginning of May, we had early saxifrage, early buttercup. They, by mid-May, were gone. These ones come out. And now we're just almost up to mid-June, and you can see we're losing a lot of these plants. But you're going to see some other ones that's just coming out, and they're only going to last a couple weeks. So we'll walk out on the Elvar, and I'll show you some of these interesting plants and sages. looking at is the flagship uh, plant of the Elvar here, prairie smoke or free flowered avens. Early in the spring it was blooming and this is a wetter area so you can see there's a bloom here uh, because it's wet. Even the balsam ragwort looks better because it's uh, wet in this area but most of them have gone to their long styles now called three flower ravens because you can see here on the stalk here's the stalk one two three stalks three flowers this gets um, like this now and as the wind blows you get it moving you get that smoky haze moving as if smoke's drifting over the elvar so that's why it's called prairie smoke and um, Beside us here is a real nice picture of balsam ragwort. It was almost gone at that first area, but because this is uh, wetter here, it's holding on. And you can see there are several sedges and rushes. Here's a spike rush, Iliochris, um, um, and then you can see Duncus um, Dudley eye here, and an Ovelli sedge. Um, looks like uh, projecta. So several sedges, several spike rushes, several rush out here in the Elvar too. So what we were looking at is Pensadum hirsutus, hairy beard tongue, and the little white flower where long leaf Bluets, and the longleaf bluets are holding on, and the beard tongue will hold on for another week, and they're on the way out. But you can see there's several hawkweeds moving in, several species like um, tall hawkweed and orange hawkweed come on to the elbow, and uh, you'll see lots of oxide daisies. They were brought on when the cattle were ranching here as the hay came in, the seeds were in the hay and they've taken over and they seem to be able to survive through the summer. We are getting the bluets and the beard tongue early now and then they'll fade away in another two weeks. There are some beautiful roses out here on the Elvar. This particular species is quite common. You notice how smooth it is, no thorns of any account here, and that's called Rosa Blanda, or the smooth rose. Uh, pretty flowers this time of year. Again, it'll fade soon. There are some shrubs that can survive on the Elver. We have uh, gray dogwood, we have uh, the low service berry, pin cherries out in the spring, northern downy wood, several viburnums that have already bloomed. This is 
one that's still hanging on, the last to bloom, is highbush cranberry. And the interesting thing about this uh, here is it's the native highbush cranberry, not the gelder rose that you often see around homesteads that's brought in. Not as good for wildlife. This is the native highbush cranberry. These are false sepals around the outside to attract pollinating moths and insects. These are the true flowers in the inside. Highbush cranberry will get uh, nice berries that are good for birds later on in the season. So nice to see the native highbush cranberry here on the Elvar. A few more shrubs here on the Elvar. This particular one looks a bit like staghorn sumac that we see planted around our homes in the city, but this is smooth sumac, another species of, uh, of the sumac, and we have uh, fragrant sumac out here as well. A native species on Elvar, this here unfortunately is common buckthorn, and it's moved in here again with the cattle. This is a highly invasive uh, plant that we talk about and I really hate to see it on the Elvar. There's another one over here that I'm not too happy about having on the Elvar either is this one and it's abundant out here especially where the cattle have gone. It's called uh, Tartarian honeysuckle brought over from Europe planted around homesteads and the birds carry the seeds and then the cattle uh, spread the seeds and we have a lot of tartarian honeysuckle. So not great to see the common buckthorn and the tartarian honeysuckle. We want the native shrubs and the native plants. We talked about native shrubs. Here's another native viburnum called nanny berry. It's done blooming. It'll get the berries on the fall. Excellent for uh, birds in the fall again. One more that I'd like to show you is fragrant sumac. We'll just go on until we find one. We'll talk about fragrant sumac. So we talked about fragrant sumac and here it is. It's done blooming and it's gotten the berries now. A nice little shrub, native shrub. If you crush the leaves and smell them, it gives you a great odor. So fragrant sumac, and here's the old stock of wild bergamot from last year. Now bergamot will be out in another couple of weeks, but you can see it was quite abundant here last fall. Look at all the stalks. One shrub we don't like to see on the Elver is this one here, is common juniper. It tends to spread out and crowd out fragrant sumac and other plants. So we don't like to see uh, the common juniper spreading out on the Elvar. I can't believe that less than um, two weeks ago, just over a week ago, this was a mass of white of the field chickweed, the bluets, the painted cup, the balsam ragwort, the yellow, the orange, the pink from the prairie smoke, the white from the uh, chickweed, pure chickweed. A mass of flowers and you can see now they're just hanging on. They'll last for a couple more days and then they'll be gone. So that's how quickly, two weeks, two to two and a half weeks, the flowers have to come out and bloom before the hot dry days of late June come and the whole thing dries up. There's one little plant we're going to see that's still, it's just coming into peak bloom right now. So it's a little later and it'll last for a couple or more weeks. It's a hardy little plant you should know. Very unusual plant in an Elvar. We've seen a few hairy beard tongue and a few painted cup, but now we come up on this rock and this is a limestone pavement, and the moss is just established here. A few grains of sand have grown, gathered here, and this little plant is growing right off the rock in a bit of sand. 
And I really like the common name for this little one. It's called rock sandwort. It's changed its uh, scientific name several times. When I first knew it, it was Arenaria stricta. They changed it to Minuarda mersoii, and then they've changed it again. And they've even changed the common name, but I'll stick with the rock sandwort. Look at it again. Hard rock it's growing on with a little bit of sand. How it can survive the next two weeks, you can see it's in full bloom, and it will be now for a couple more weeks. Very little water out here, and hardly anything to grow on. That rock sandwort has a tough little alvar plant. Another plant that blooms, just coming into bloom now, is this sedum called mossy stonecrop. Uh, sedum occur. This will be all yellow, a profusion of yellow, in the next couple of weeks, and uh, will last on into the end of the month. So, just coming on now, a few are in bloom here, and we'll get more and more. So we'll have a mass of yellow now on the Elbar for the next couple of weeks with Marcy Stone Crop. <laughs> at the north end of Bulls Elvar at the rock. I call this the rock. It's a glacier erratic. You can see it's a nice bedrock. You can see the feldspar and the quartz and the uh, hornbrand pitch blend. So this was moved down by the Precambrian field by the ice flows to the south. It's on limestone bedrock here. So limestone is a sedimentary rock. This is a metamorphic rock, uh, been formed by pressure and heat. And you can see we're getting lots of single rock lichen and other species of lichen growing on this glacial erratic. So I use this as my landmark place. I call it the rock. We know we're at the north end of the best part of the Elvar. We'll head south now and go through a wet depression and look at sedges. These mating butterflies are called, uh, they used to be called inornate ringlet. They changed that to prairie ringlet. They call it common ringlet now. A very common butterfly out here on the Elvar with a slow floppy flight. And it's pretty inornate. It hasn't got much markings. It's just got one black ring on it. <laughs> off the Elvar areas in these low depressions we have some wet spots that stay wet until later on into early July. You can see the blue flag, uh, iris versa color here, but what we really want to look at are the sedges. So we have this interesting sedge here in front of us. Um, this one here and that's called Sort well said, and um, you can see it's Carex saltwellii, and it's called marsh running said. I've drawn a picture of it here, very distinct said, and you can see the perigenia, little seeds in here. So sedges are interesting plants. We have another one right beside that salt well said, and it's called um, broadleaf woolly said. There's the perigenia for it, and it's got this spike coming off the base, so let's see if we can see some. Uh, here's a very similar set to that one. It's the uh, le this, um, Lasiocarpa, the woolly fruited set. It looks a bit like the uh, 
they're both got woolly perigenia and they both grow in these wet areas. So a couple more sedges and the one last sedge we'll look at, I mean there's 600 sedges in North America, there's probably about 30 sedges out here. Last one we wanted to look at is granulatus and I have samples of crawii and granulatus. What you do, you look at the spike. If it's got the staminate flowers, the male flowers, and the pistillate flowers, see some of these have long stalks and some of them are very short. The short one granulatus, the longer ones are, um, are the um, cross sedge. And then we have uh, Iliocris. Uh, and we have um, some spike rushes here. This one's compressed spike rush. So a lot of rushes, sedges, and bull rushes in this area. If you're going to do rushes and sedges, you really need some special books. You need uh, books like, uh, this is a field guide to sedges of Wisconsin. I have another one, uh, sedges of Maine. It's a little heavier to carry. In the field, I, I bring this one that shows all the different. So we probably have, um, we've got over 150 here in Simcoe County, and we're in Simcoe County. And that's the neat thing about this Elvar, it's in Simcoe County. We're right on the edge of uh, upper Lake Dalrymple. If we go across the lake to the east, we're on Cardin Elvar, so you can see the connection here. It's just that this got missed because it's in Simcoe County where we've been looking at City of Quarry for Wood Lake, the old Cardin Township for, for Elvars up until now. So that shows you a little bit of Bulls Elvar. I'd like to take you down to the south end to show you Prairie Red Route and New Jersey Tea, the host plant for model dusky wing butterflies. But that's an hour's walk to the south and we're, we've had a pretty full day on Bulls Elvars. So we're going to wrap it up here and uh, just walk back through the wetland, over the limestone pavement, and back to civilization. I hope you enjoyed your brief visit to this Simcoe County Elvar, um, Bulls Elvar, 600 acres of prime Elvar habitat.